What does the Bible say about Lucifer, demons, and the Nephilim? There are a lot of misconceptions concerning Lucifer, the fallen one, the fallen angels, demon spirits, and the Nephilim. What we know now today as the devil, that old serpent and dragon was used to be called Lucifer. The word Lucifer is Halel in the Hebrew meaning the morning star. Within the Holy Bible, the devil has a name and his name is Satan. His formal name, Satan, derives from the Hebrew Hasatan. Ha means the and Satan means opposer or adversary. The name described his eventual function as the opposer of God's creation. Notice the choice of my words. I stated the name described his eventual function. The origins of Satan roots back into heaven. He is described as the anointed cherub, one who was created to be immensely superior to all the other angels and maintained a type of leadership dominion and strength over the other angels. Lucifer, prior to his fall, was created with a natural capacity of strength and wisdom, and highest in honor and dignity, the brightest of all those stars. He indeed was the anointed cherub that we see in Ezekiel 28 verse 14. Cherubim are described in the Bible as having four faces, a face of an ox, a lion, an eagle, and a man. But this anointed cherub was cast out of heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ stated, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And the reality is that Satan is not in hell. He is not in the abyss. He is not locked up in chains of darkness. He is on this earth. And on this earth he has a satanic kingdom which has one primary objective and that one objective is to wage war. To wage war against the creation of God. The kingdoms of this world were handed to him when Adam and Eve fell in the book of Genesis. This is why he is described as being the God of this world. When the devil took the Lord Jesus Christ to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and offered them up to Jesus if Jesus would worship Satan. Satan had the right to do so. Satan was not lying. He had the power to do so because the kingdoms he showed Jesus was his to give to whomsoever he pleased. There is a very real devil who is the god of this world. The Greek word Diabolos is translated in English, the devil meant accuser, slanderer, again describing his role. The devil is the accuser, he is the slander, he is the adversary, he is the tormentor and the persecutor. There is nothing, nothing good about the devil. He is the deceiver and the liar. At this very core, he is shrouded in deception. He is never what he appears to be. The Bible tells us that Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. He operates in the shadows and has an unnatural ability to not appear the way he truly is. Although Satan is powerful, he by no means is all-powerful. He himself is not in the league of God. One thing you must remember about the Almighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Ancient of Days, the Sustainer, the Giver of Life. He sits above all things. He sits in the realm above all of his creation. The devil is no match for God, and he knows it. So if you are ever in a situation where you are faced with this malignant person that is called Lucifer, don't run, but simply call upon the Lord. Now, Allow us to move on to demons and evil spirits. The origin of demons is unclear. The Bible does not give us a clear origin story concerning demons. So no one can actually say that they know 100% where they come from. 
But there are a number of theories put forward by biblical scholars. I will detail some theories, but I will not go into detail about their strengths and weaknesses. Number one, disembodied spirits of a pre-Adamic race. Some believe that demons are disembodied spirits of a pre-Adamic race of mankind that lived on earth in a gap period that allegedly fits between Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2. Those who favor this theory contend that Genesis 1 verse 1 describes the creation of a complete and perfect earth many millenniums ago. This perfect earth was changed into the state described in Genesis 1 verse 2 as a result of the sin of either the angels or of the pre-Adamic men who inhabited the pristine earth, or both. The state described in verse 1 may have lasted for thousands or even millions of years. Likewise, the state described in verse 2 may have lasted for thousands of years. La Peyrière, one of the proponents of this theory, claimed that Cain's fear of being killed by others, his marriage to an unknown woman, and the fact that he founded a city, Genesis 4 verse 14 to 17, were all evidences that there was another race of men that coexisted with Adam. This theory is very unlikely because within the Bible there are no mentions of a pre-Adamic race. Theory number two, fallen but not confined angels. This theory holds the view that demons are fallen angels. Some of the angels who fell were bound while others became demons. Other theories are that demons are the products of angels and humans mixing. The origin of demons is not important. What is important is acknowledging their existence and knowing that they are real and that there is a real spirit world that exists around us. Now, finally allow us to look at the Nephilim, the Hebrew word Nafal primarily means to fall, although it can also mean miscarriage and even wonderful, mighty. Most commentators believe it refers to fallen ones. And because of this, through the years a lot of people have gone to great lengths to convince people that these fallen ones actually came down from above and are the explanation of both ancient astronauts and ancient UFO accounts. You can see why there is a lot of controversy regarding this topic. Now, firstly, before we proceed, it is important to note that the Nephilim are not fallen angels. They are not. They are the products of what the Bible called the sons of God and humans. Genesis 6 verse 1 to 4 And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. The sons of God were angelic beings. The sons of God, in this context, refers to angels or fallen angels, and daughters of men refers to human women. The Nephilim are the superhuman offsprings of angels and humans. They are the products of intermarrying between mortals and immortals. 
They are a hybrid creation which God did not create. This viewpoint is what most Bible scholars agree with. They argue that the phrase sons of God clearly refer to angelic creatures when it is used the three other times in the Old Testament. Job 1 verse 6 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. Job 2 verse 1 Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Job 38 verse 7 When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Supporters of this view highlight that it is important to note that in Jude 1 verse 6, the Bible reveals to us that there are angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own habitation. And then Jude 1 verse 7 goes on to tell us they sinned in a similar manner to the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah, who gave themselves over to sexual immorality and going after strange flesh. In other words, there was an unnatural sexual union. Proponents of this view argue that these could be the angels which are referred to as the sons of God in Genesis. Jude 1 verse 6 and 7 And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness bound with everlasting change for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. What these two verses reveal to us is that God judged these wicked angels setting them in everlasting chains. So, we can conclude that some fallen angels are in bondage, while others are unbound and active among mankind. For instance, the devil himself is not bound, but is very active across the earth.